Do you remember that story about the senator in North Carolina who dumped his stocks after getting a government briefing that coronavirus was gonna wreck America? Well, now the FBI is getting involved. The FBI serving Senator Richard Burr with a search warrant at his Washington, D.C. area home and seizing his cell phone. Federal agents are investigating potential insider trading after the Republican senator sold stocks that were later hit hard because of the coronavirus pandemic. As the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Burr received daily coronavirus briefings before the markets plummeted. He sold a significant percentage of his stock portfolio during that time, up to $1.6 million. Burr's brother-in-law also sold stocks on the same day. Burr denied discussing the sale with him. That's right. Like a suspicious spouse, the FBI has decided they want to look through this senator's phone. And I'm not gonna lie, that terrifies me. Like, it would be so scary for the FBI to take your phone. Because even if you didn't do anything illegal, just them going through your search history is gonna be so embarrassing. Oh my God, look at this, Agent Petty. <laughs> this guy Googled, is Megan the Stallion a horse? <laughs> oh my God, this guy's too dumb to have committed the crime. All right. <laughs> and to me, maybe the worst part about this scandal is that Senator Burr was telling everyone, was telling everyone in America that things were gonna be okay while he and his family were quietly saving their own asses. This would be like if Noah built the ark, but didn't tell anyone why he was doing it. Oh, this thing? No, it's just a fun side project I'm creating. I'll probably sell it on Etsy or something. <laughs> Wait, is something bad going to happen? No, no, of course not. Everything is fine. But tell me, could you help me find two albino tigers? In other news, all over the world, people are starting to push back against government lockdown orders. Because for many people, not working and not having kids in school far outweighs the risk of coronavirus. Well, yesterday in Wisconsin, the state Supreme Court gave the anti-lockdown movement a major win. And we begin with the breaking news overnight, a major decision on stay-at-home orders. This could reverberate nationwide. Now, the Wisconsin Supreme Court overturning the state's mandate to stay home as unenforceable under state law. This is a victory for people across the country opposing directives aimed at slowing the spread of the coronavirus. It didn't take long for bars in Wisconsin to reopen after the ruling. No masks in sight. Yes. Wisconsin Supreme Court struck down the governor's lockdown, and the very first thing people did was celebrate by packing into tiny bars with no masks on. And they weren't the only ones celebrating. In fact, I think we've got footage from coronavirus headquarters when these people all went out to the bar. Now look, I do sympathize with people in Wisconsin. I mean, even in normal times, they only get to be outside like two months a year. I mean, their weather is a natural lockdown. But here's the thing that gets me. I understand people who feel like getting kids in school, getting back to work, and reopening doctor's offices is worth the risk of coronavirus, right? I get it. I understand where you are coming from. But if the first thing you do when you're not locked down is pack yourself into bars, where you spring into each other's faces, something tells me you give zero I mean, at least be honest and just say, hey, this is less about balancing the risks and benefits and more about being able to do whatever you want. Because right now, what these people in Wisconsin have done is basically like someone saying that they're dying of thirst and then you give them water and they throw a wet t-shirt contest. And finally, everyone is thinking about all the ways that life might be different over the next few years. Will sports return, but to empty stadiums? Will summer camps take place online? Will hugging? be replaced by gently poking one another with a long pole. Well, here in New York, there's an idea for how we can ride the subway without crowds. People taking the subway or a bus to work may soon have to make reservations. Subway systems in New York City are considering bus and subway ride reservations as a way to enforce social distancing. The MTA chairman and CEO suggested that riders in the future could be asked to reserve a space ahead of time in order to reduce density in otherwise very crowded trains. Okay, wait, wait, hold up, hold up. Making reservations for the New York subway? Who thought of this? Two weeks ago, they started cleaning subway cars for the first time ever. And now what, they think they're a Michelin star restaurant? You're not tricking anyone, New York subway. You're not a fancy bistro. You're a moving rat fight club that people take to work. Also, the subway is never on time. 
So I mean, you can make a reservation for seven, but best believe the train is coming at 9.30. And then good luck explaining to the 9.30 people that this isn't their train, that the 9.30 train is actually coming at 11. But I'm looking forward to calling them to make my reservation. I mean, that's gonna be a fun conversation. Hi, MTA, I'd like to make a reservation for the subway, please, 7 p.m.? Yeah, I was, I was hoping to be in the non-masturbation section. Mm-hmm. Oh, the entire train is the masturbation section? I see. Okay, well, well, in that case, can I, can I sit next to whoever finishes fastest? Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.